full screen. Now I can't see the waiting room anymore though. Down. Um, first of all, uh, I want to welcome all the new members. We've had a lot of new members join uh, the chapter in the last year, uh, probably because of COVID. We've had more people have been able to join us uh, via Zoom who aren't interested in driving all the way across the county to get to us. And we're really grateful that um, you've all decided to join us. Um, both the folks that are here tonight and everybody who's joined in the last year, um, the folks who have joined most recently are listed here. And um, thank all of you for joining. Um, there's the beautiful Laetris. I don't know, Ginger sent, Ginger Brangle sent, our um, membership chair sent me this PowerPoint. I don't know if that's in her yard or not, but it's certainly appropriate, appropriate for October, which is, Florida Native Plant Month. Um, and in case you didn't know, uh, FNPS invented Florida Native, Native Plant Month a few years ago. Um, sorry, my microphone wasn't even anywhere close to my mouth. Um, a few years ago, and we had a, a kind of a brainstorming session at Shirley Denton's house over in Thoner de Sassa about what we could do to promote native plants. And we came up with Florida Native Plant Month. And so we've been doing it ever since that time. Originally, we um, were doing a lot of proclamations um, at different around the state at different county um, meet county commission meetings and city council meetings, um, and that was a lot of fun. We haven't done that quite as much lately, although Sari Wood did uh, go and do one at Dunedin this month, and so in Dunedin it was proclaimed to be Florida Native Plant Month in October. So I hope everybody is enjoying all of the stuff that blooms in October. Um, we picked October as Florida Native Plant Month specifically because there are so many uh, great wildflowers and grasses that bloom in this month that it seemed like the best time to have it. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is next year. And before you know it, it's gonna be 2022 and uh, we need to have a new chapter board. Some of our board members have agreed to continue on and some of them have elected not to, so um, we're replacing them. Um, we, I believe Rebecca sent out um, and are listed here, all of the folks who have agreed to serve on our board in 2022. We do have a board election, so we have to have our members approve these uh, nominations, which were compiled by the nominating committee, which consisted of myself, um, Bonnie Crean, who is on tonight, um, and um, our future Vice President Jane, Jane Graham stepped up at the last minute. Um, be, as Rebecca uh, Wellborn was on the committee uh, originally, but then stepped down, so Jane replaced her. Um, I think we have a, a really good group um, for next year, and they are listed here. Okay. Get some more folks in the waiting room. Um, I think uh, Davis Burkett is going to be a great president. He, if you don't know Davis, he uh, uh, did a program for us um, on edibles, edible plants a few months back. And then more recently, he did one on container gardening with natives. And both of them were great. He has a wonderful knowledge of uh, native plants, especially those used in landscaping. Um, and, and he's really a native plant evangelist, which is what you want for somebody who is uh, president of native plant chapter. Um, Jane Graham has been on our board all this year, has done a fantastic job. Um, she is an attorney and she has uh, taken on several projects lately that um, have environmental implications in trying to protect, uh, preserve, conserve and um, protect native plants and native plant communities. Um, Andrea Anderson is um, also going to be new on our board um, in addition to Davis as she is a ranger at Boyd Hill Nature Park and she also has a very deep knowledge of native plants and native plant communities so I think she'll be great. Um, she also teaches environmental science at Eckerd College. Robin Peacock is continuing as treasurer this year. She's done a fantastic job for us and we're glad that she has um, decided to stay. Uh, ditto for David Perkey. 
Um, David's been our chapter rep now for several years. I, uh, he replaced me and he's doing a great job. Our chapter rep, if you don't know, um, the role of the chapter rep is to be our liaison with the state organization. And so there are quarterly member, uh, quarterly meetings between um, all of the chapter representatives throughout the state, one chapter rep from each chapter. Um, and usually the, the FNPS board is also present at those uh, meetings and they have their meeting there too. Um, I will be stepping down as past president and will not be on the board next year. Um, I have been on this board for uh, decades, literally, uh, almost decades, but more than a decade. Um, Michael Coleman will now succeed me as past president as Davis will be taking his place. And uh, we thank Michael for doing a great job for us the last couple of years. And we're glad that he's still gonna be around. Um, he's also uh, considering staying on our conservation committee uh, where he is, um, He's also been a participant along with his wife, Jackie. Um, Pam Schrader, who's here tonight, is our program chair, has done a wonderful job for us and has uh, thankfully has elected to stay on the board and continue, continue her role as program chair. And the same is true for Ginger Bringle. She is also continuing and has also done a great job for us as membership chair. We have, um, Sari Wood has been on our board and is continuing on the board, but she's um, stepping down as secretary, and, but is going to remain as a director. And um, we thank her for her work as secretary, not only for our board meetings, but she's also um, been like our recording secretary for our conservation committee meetings, which has been real helpful. Uh, we have two new directors this year, Vicki Thomas and Jessica Palanchar. Um, Vicki is a really a great evangelist for native plants. Um, she lives in Dunedin, and uh, if you didn't see it, uh, you may, uh, you should. Uh, Rebecca Wellborn did a very nice video of Vicki uh, in her garden talking about her beautiful garden full of native plants with lots of pollinator plants. So um, we're welcome Vicki and uh, look forward to having her um, evangelize on native plants too. Uh, Jessica is the owner of the resupply market in Dunedin and Tampa, um, and uh, is also very concerned about environmental issues. So um, we think she's going to be a great, uh, great addition to our board too. Um, so this is what we have for you in 2022, the nominating committee. And if you are a um, official paid up member of the chapter, um, we will be sending you a, an email that asks you to accept or reject this slate of uh, nominees for the 2022 board. Uh, so I got a couple more people in the waiting room. So let me let them in. Um, if so, I need to ask, according to our bylaws, in addition to the nominees that the slate of nominees that the nominating committee has assembled, um, we can also accept uh, nominations from the floor. So if there's anybody here tonight who would like to be on the board next year, would like to be considered, we will add you as an alternate for whichever position it is that you would like to um, occupy. Um, so, so speak now in the chat. Um, if you would like to nominate yourself or someone else uh, with their permission, of course. Um, so now, now is the time, speak now or forever hold your peace. Um, if you would like to be added to the slate of nominees. Jan, I move nominations from the floor be closed. Okay. Do I have a, who is that seconding? Sue. Sue, okay. Um, can I have a, I, I don't know how we vote on that, but. <laughs> I, I, this is more of a going, going, gone type situation, I think, because we don't have a way to vote, Debbie. Um, so. About voting in the chat. Okay. If you would like to vote in the chat, you can.
All right, I'm not seeing I'm not seeing any um, messages in the chat, so I'm going to close nominations, and um, we will be sending all uh, all members a um, a ballot, basically, which is um, going to be a form, an online form that you can fill out. So now that we've completed that business, um, we have a field trip in November. Um, we are, this is pretty exciting stuff. Uh, we're going to be going to the uh, Rosebud Continuum. Uh, members Craig Eagle and uh, Lisa Boeing have been doing work there for quite some time, um, helping the owners um, with uh, removing invasives and um, planting native plants and creating a better uh, plant community there. And uh, Craig is going to be co-leading this field trip along with the owner of Rosebud Continuum, Marianne Bishop. Um, she and her husband, uh, Sonny Bishop, who was a former NFL player, own the Rosebud Continuum. And it is, it's more than just their home. It's a sustainability education center, which has all of the attributes that you see there listed. Um, if you would like to go, you'll need to RSVP. You can go to our website, uh, find the calendar button and click it, and then find it on the calendar page for November 13th. And you can get the Actually, address The date address on that there. is November 7th. Oh, 7th. Oh, yeah. Where did yeah. I get the 13th? <clears throat> I don't know. Thank you for correcting me. Yeah. Or whatever right. that Sunday I'm is. I'm changing it. Before that. That yeah, would be so November 6th, right? 6th. Okay, yeah. sorry. Okay. okay, November 6th. Is it Sunday or Saturday? It's a Sunday. Craig wasn't available Saturday, so Sunday that was the only the day. We could oh, thank goodness you were here. Okay. Thank goodness you were here, Pam. <laughs> Keep me straight. Okay. Okay, All so right. the Sunday is the 7th. Is that Sunday? Right? I thought it was the 6th. It's the 7th. Oh, it's the seventh. Yeah, that's okay. right. It's a day. It's daylight saving time changes. Okay. Okay. okay sorry about Third that. Third time's a charm. Right. Right. Okay. There we go. November seventh. Okay, nine to eleven. Um, so go to the calendar and then send us an email RSVP at and uh, let us know that you would like to come. The address where the place is uh, and other information is there. There's an article from. Uh, 83 degrees media that talks about all the cool stuff that is there that will make you want to come to that field trip. And lastly, uh, we've ha we ha are still having work days at the Butterfly Garden at Moxon Lake Park. It is looking really beautiful right now. Um, I was out there with uh, Marianne Martin this uh, past Saturday and we ripped out a lot of invasive stuff. Um, there is still some work to do, but it's not as overgrown as you might think at the end of the summer because we have had some wonderful volunteers on a continuing basis um, out there pulling weeds and pruning things. Um, so it looks really nice and there's lots of butterflies. If you'd like to help with this um, effort, then uh, you can participate. You can RSVP, uh, send an email to volunteer at PinellasNativePlants.org and uh, you can help us out. And that's the next date. And then there's, I think there's another one in November that's uh, later on, um, on a Saturday. But this is where we've been doing this Tuesdays and Saturdays. So this is the next one, which is on a Tuesday. Uh, and that is all I have. Yep. Um, I have one more thing I wanted to remind people about. And that is that this Friday is the deadline to provide feedback about the uh, Kirkpatrick Dam uh, on the Ocklawaha River, uh, the Rodman Reservoir. The, it's, this is the best opportunity that we've had for a long time to get this dam removed and to restore the Ocklawaha River and its floodplain. Um, the Florida Department of Environmental Protection favors removing the dam, which it has not uh, in the past. The state has not really supported that, although the environmental community has been lobbying for it for literally decades. Um, but the cost to repair this uh, old, creaky, useless structure is greater than it would be to remove it and do a proper restoration of the river and its floodplain. And so the Florida Department of Environmental Protection is supporting that. 
the they are um, soliciting public feedback on this and it is easy to provide your feedback but you need to do it soon because time is running out our uh, fnps policy chair um, gene kelly has done a terrific job of compiling a number of reasons why that dam should be removed and you can find that on the fnps website at the um, web address that i have on the screen and if you will uh, go there, it has the link for the survey that's being run by the St. John's River Water Management District. Just go to that. It's just an online form, and it asks you whether you support removing the dam, and then it asks a few questions about, um, you know, why. And he's given you all the reasons why. You can pick and choose. You don't have, he's given you so many reasons, you can just pick a few, and then paste them right into the form, edit it a little bit to give it your own particular slant, uh, and send it off. You do not have to have uh, uh, been to the Oklahoma River. You don't have to have kayaked it. You don't have to have personal connection to it. You have. You just have to care. Um, you don't even have to be a Florida resident uh, that that I know of. But we really need your feedback. We would really like to see that dam removed. Um, that it it was part of. It was installed as part of the Cross Florida barge canal which was an ill-fated um, project to begin with that president nixon stopped so that's how long ago this happened and it's no longer needed but um, political pressure and uh, moneyed bass fishermen have kept it there all these years it's it is not a potable water resource um, it's a recreation resource at this point and um, all floridians would be better if it were removed and that is fnps's position and um, we ask you to weigh in. So that's my last word for tonight on that. Um, Pam, do you have anything else to remind people about? Uh, you got any no. other cool field trips in your pocket? Um, no, not right now. <laughs> and do you know, yeah. we, we don't know yet. Do we know who's speaking next month? Well, actually, um, he had to cancel. Um, his okay. father passed away. So he'll be speaking in December. So um, we'll come up with something for November. Yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah. All right. Well, thank thank you, everybody. Enjoy uh, Florida Native Plant Month. Um, I hope all of your lovely Florida plants are blooming like crazy, and that uh, you'll have an opportunity to get out and enjoy the beautiful fall weather. I'm going camping with the Suncoast chapter this weekend, and I'm really looking forward to it. Um, and have hopefully. Fun. In the new year, we can get a lot more stuff going once COVID releases its grip a little bit more and um, we'll be able to meet in person. And we're still planning on uh, having our meetings on Zoom as well so that uh, folks who don't want to have to come to Moccasin Lake Park can still um, learn about native plants and native plant communities. So um, thank you, everybody. And don't forget to vote when you get your, uh, your email asking you uh, about the nominees for 2022. And thank you to all the nominees for um, volunteering to help us run the chapter um, because if we didn't have volunteers, uh, nothing would get done. So that's it. Okay, thanks, Jan. Thanks everybody. Good night. Night. <laughs>